world. My next guest is stopping by from LinkedIn and is challenging the way her fellow community shows up to work each and every day. Wellness and well being have been on the radar screen for a long time, and it's a rare business leader who couldn't recite why they're important these days. But with macroeconomic trends having many of us on edge, budgets getting slashed, and most of us trying to figure out how we can operate in scarcity and how our organizations can continue to put their people first and still exceed results, all kind of in the same boat. So joining me today is Sydney Falk, enterprise ad tech partnerships leader at LinkedIn, who is embracing what she calls her strength within. And she joins me to get radically transparent about how LinkedIn is buckling down and embracing startup mode while ensuring their employees' well-being is their uppermost priority. Sydney, welcome to the show. Are you ready to get radically transparent with me? Absolutely. <laughs> We're Great really to be here. <laughs> We're really excited to have you here. And I know you know you, you and I have been chatting a bit about the strength within. We're going to get into that in a moment. With the state of the world the way it is right now, I have to ask, what is keeping you up at night professionally? That's a great question. Um, I would say that as we enter the thick of the economic downturn, where budgets are starting to really tighten and resources are becoming even more scarce, everyone's dealing with a multitude of stressors in and outside of work. So it's incredibly important to find tools, not only to cope, but really to make the most of what resources we do have. So being resilient in this environment is more important than ever. What I often think about are tools and programs that I can find or create that will enable me and my peers to accomplish more with less and stay sane in the process. Well, I think staying sane is key. <laughs> um, and for sure. And, and I think, you know, you're not alone. Many of us so are, are up at night with you on these exact thoughts. And as you mentioned, right, your your well-being is of utmost priority. So what I want to talk about now is something that you started at LinkedIn called Strength Within. Can you walk us through what it is, why you started it? And just give us a lay of the land. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I joined the channel partnerships team within the LinkedIn marketing solutions business a little over a year ago. And outside of being extremely excited to be joining such a progressive and vibrant company, I was also just at a new stage in my own fitness journey where I was looking to extend my network and build community around the sports and health topics that I tend to nerd out on daily. So the group itself aims to create space for LinkedIn employees who enjoy or are interested in strength sports. So today that includes CrossFit, powerlifting and Olympic lifting, bodybuilding, overall strength training, and who knows, maybe there'll be others that I haven't even thought about yet uh, that as folks continue to join, we'll, we'll get involved in. And so we wanna give folks the opportunity to experience and enjoy those different sports together, while also providing continued education and opportunities to connect in person and virtually on a variety of topics related to a fit lifestyle. So it's really interesting. I mean, because I don't know about you, but when I think of people working at LinkedIn, right, I'm thinking, okay, they definitely are all knowing how the algorithm works and we're all trying to do it. And they have all of these secrets on, you know, best practices on when to post and what our LinkedIn profile should look like and how to do paid right. And then here you are starting strength within and really bringing together the LinkedIn community in a whole new way. And I think the most interesting thing about this program, keep me honest, is that sure. it's employee led. So that means it's not, it was not like LinkedIn woke up one morning was like wellness, right? And, and like, let's do this. This, this really came from you. Yes. Um, and, and as you mentioned, uh, yeah, LinkedIn didn't wake up one day and, and think wellness, this is a great thing. It's been an established part of our sort of overall operating model. Um, wellness is like a huge focus for the company overall. Um, and when I started, uh, I really just was trying to find an outlet to bring my whole self to work in this capacity. And as expansive as the wellness program is, I saw a gap where there was no, no focus in this specific niche area. But, you know, I figured why not try to just start something from scratch? 
Um, because I firmly believe that the way we show up to the fitness part of our lives, which is a huge part of my life personally, has a lasting and positive impact on the way that we work. Um, as I built my life around CrossFit and weightlifting, I'm not only training to be stronger, but also I'm gathering up all these different tools uh, you know, within my mind to fortify myself for the challenges that I inevitably face every day. And there's tons of research out there that shows that exercise supports cognitive function and all these different things. So, you know, by getting involved in these sports, building skills and resilience, harnessing the power of consistency, and I'm constantly challenged to think and act quickly with precision, particularly in CrossFit, for example, you often have to come up with a strategy as to how you're going to make your way through a workout, and whether it's breaking up the reps or thinking about pacing, all of these different things combined, you know, really give me an enhanced skill set that I can bring with me into the workplace to be more flexible and patient in how I set expectations for myself and look to accomplish goals. So as the, the name suggests, it's not just about the power and, and strength to conquer any weight or workout, but the strength within LinkedIn loves a good in pun. <laughs> so uh, it really worked well. Um, so, you know, using that strength to conquer any goal that we look to attain at the gym or in the office or in our daily lives, and so far, the alignment and the timing of bringing this all together has really been uncanny. And it's really kind of getting a lot of momentum in a short period of time. Well, congratulations. I think that's really something to be proud of. When I think about this journey, right, and again, what you're saying, right, the, the way that you show up to work and, and how fitness plays such an important role and how you show up, can you walk through what have been some of the biggest hurdles to get through leading something like this? Because it keep be honest, right? It's not like you're in HR, you're not head of the wellness program. This, as you mentioned, it's employee led. So what are some of the obstacles? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the culture at LinkedIn, uh, as you mentioned uh, before, is absolutely tied to a startup mindset. And I'm convinced even at this early stage that any employee that has an idea that can show tangible value has a chance to create something amazing. Uh, and so just like any startup, it's kind of this mentality of not getting too bogged down in the details, but keeping it simple, starting small. So for example, building a SharePoint, you know, that shows our mission and vision and kind of gives a little bit more information about what it is that we're trying to build. Um, and then adding piece by piece. So getting wellness to sponsor a small in-person event, for example, um, and then starting to build some of that network and those relationships with our enterprise resource groups or ERGs. So don't get me wrong, the challenges are definitely numerous, but the culture at LinkedIn um, is really to support employees and really foster uh, you know, any of the, the different tools for wellness. And all these elements are so strong that I haven't really hit any complete brick walls yet. I would say that the top challenges at this point um, are really, you know, first off, trying to figure out how to build and scale a group like this. Um, you know, we're very similar to the ERGs in many ways, but also very different. Uh, so figuring out the exact structure as to how to get people involved and then like have different individuals take on various leadership roles, that's still a work in progress for sure. And then secondly, I would say, you know, tying back to what I was talking about earlier, resources and budgets getting a little slim these days. So operating in scarcity is definitely a major exercise in creativity and staying flexible. So at this point, Strength Within doesn't have its own budget, but rather I'm working with folks across our wellness team and different ERGs to fund and support all of our programs. And so far, I've been partnering with groups like Enable In which fosters inclusion and accessibility for people with disabilities, mental health struggles, and invisible illnesses, and out it in, which engages and empowers and elevates the LGBTQ ally community at LinkedIn. So, you know, realistically, we're gonna find ways to connect and partner with all the ERGs, I imagine. The tenets of strength within are incredibly intersectional and can be applied to literally everyone. So it's really just a matter of finding all the right opportunities to showcase the power of strength sports, and overall health topics through each ERG's lens. I love it. Listen, I'm going to shift for a moment because a few things are going through my head, right? So LinkedIn is notorious for being a great place to work. And, and we see this, you know, there's a lot of, on, on LinkedIn, right, a lot of organizations doing employer branding. And we do see this from LinkedIn, you, really, truly, the photos that come out from the LinkedIn headquarters and from across the world really look inviting and and really make LinkedIn a great look like a great place to work and hearing you speak about it right it's like sign me up like this sounds like an incredible company 
my question to you is you have this organization that's heavily investing in their employees, supporting employee-led programs. And I think most of us do recognize that when you're treated well by your employer, this really does impact in a positive way the way you do your job, as you say, like the way you show up to work. But what I've noticed we're seeing lately is this trend between what employees in the workforce want. Uh, I think recently today, I actually read like the former CEO of Google like came out with a statement that all employees should be back in the office, right? And we see, you know, Elon Musk kind of making this similar, you know, employees must all come back to the office. And I bring this up because as you're leading this Strength Within program, you know, is there any talk, first of all, at LinkedIn about everybody coming back to the office? And then in your own opinion, right, there's so many individuals who want to work from home and find it much more productive. And then there's also individuals, oftentimes leaders or, or even others, who find that maybe they're more productive in the office. How is LinkedIn balancing this in your perspective? And how do you think strength within can play a role in helping balance these expectations from employees? Absolutely. So, you know, first and foremost, I'll say, you know, at LinkedIn, talent is their number one operating priority. Um, you know, so really it's the people at the heart of all of our business. So, you know, the way that they think about these different elements in the way that we work is really just the foundation of trust. Trust that, you know, we're all going to do our best work where it works best for us and for our teams. So we've learned that every individual and every team works differently. And at this point, we embrace flexibility with both hybrid and remote work. And the expectation at this point is more of us are going to be remote than pre-COVID. And removing the expectation of being in the office 50% of the time, it's just like not something that we're necessarily uh, subscribing to at this point in time. So alongside that foundation of trust, though, we are focused immensely on creating amazing office experiences for everyone uh, when they do come in to work and when we do have that time to come together. So initiatives like Strength Within are aimed at continuing to foster those deeper relationships in person and virtually, really. Um, and I think that that's what helps to drive a really balanced approach to hybrid work environment is embracing set, sort of this growth mindset to learn together and adjust as we go. So then, right, so Strength Within, you're based out of New York, right? Yes. And then, so Strength Within, so is it something that only takes place when you're in the office? Like, Are you leading like CrossFit in the office or are you leading a virtual session? Or how, can you just explain, I mean, how does this work from a remote or hybrid or in office experience? Absolutely. So, you know, we're kind of taking, we're taking a dual approach just in the same way where um, I myself, yes, I'm, a ba I'm based in New York. So I'm setting up in-person events. Um, we had one in October where we got a group of folks to go and take sort of an introductory, I'll call it introductory class to, to CrossFit in a way where we did one portion where we we're doing strength training and then we did some team building um, hit style workouts or high intensity interval training. But then outside of that, I think we're also going to be focused on a lot of virtual programming because we understand that people are kind of, you know, taking a lot of different approaches individually as to how they want to be able to show up to work in that way and still give people the opportunity to engage. Um, and so, you know, we're going to be looking at bringing on speakers and things of that nature, um, creating town halls, you know, getting people together so that they can talk about their relative experiences with different sports, what are the different things that they're interested in, nutrition and all those types of things. So that's kind of the approach that we're taking. I love it. So listen, I'm really excited to see Strength Within. Maybe it will get some features uh, on LinkedIn and in the feed. Um, I'm really proud of the work that you're doing. And I, I know that a lot of organizations are looking to bring you know wellness front and center and looking for the best way to do that. And maybe they'll find some strength within hearing about you speak about your program at LinkedIn. I never let anybody off the show without answering the most famous question and my favorite. And, and actually, fun fact, it actually started at LinkedIn. Um, it was a question that used to be asked all the time in the early days of LinkedIn. So what's one thing you can tell us about yourself that we actually cannot learn about you from your LinkedIn profile? And we know that you're into CrossFit and, and fitness and wellness, so we, we can't say that either. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And this is definitely a trend true, uh, you know, question that we use often uh, internally at LinkedIn as well. 
So one thing that I can tell you, it's, it's funny is juxtaposed to everything I just spoke about from a fitness perspective, but I do think that there are definitely a lot of really great mental benefits to baking. And this has been a huge focus for me. I would say, especially since the pandemic, I didn't fall quite into the trope of everyone that uh, learned how to make bread, but I definitely am a big baker. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big baker of cookies and things of that nature. And so I, I bake for mental well-being. And so this has been a huge focus of mine. Uh, so I tend to make cookies oftentimes a lot on Friday nights. Uh, instead of going out and having a drink, I may actually stay home and bake a batch of brownies or, or whatever it may be. And then I actually bring all of my baked goodies into the gym. <laughs> and so- <laughs> The motivation uh, to stay with yeah. the program. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I always say, you know, carbs for cleans. Cleans are a, a type of Olympic lift. And so, uh, so yeah, it's a- a really great outlet for me and happy to share any recipes with you after after we get off the podcast. <laughs> that would be phenomenal. Anybody listening in, I know we have a lot of um, marketing leaders that listen in. We have a lot of HR leaders for, for those doing employee advocacy programs and looking how to you know speak about wellness programs or any sort of employee-led initiatives. If anybody wants to connect with you, learn more about Strength Within, how you're taking this from the ground up, um, where's the best place to connect with you? I mean, I, I'll, I'll dog food our own thing, our own product, you know, best way to connect with me is definitely on LinkedIn. So you'll find me Sydney, C-I-D-N-E-Y, F-A-L-K. And uh, yeah, shoot me a message. Happy to chat anytime, especially for those folks that love to nerd out on any of these topics around nutrition or fitness. I am your girl. <laughs> Fantastic. Sydney, thank you for getting radically transparent with me. And we look forward to keeping an eye on strength within. Sounds good. Great talking with you. Thanks for tuning in to the Radically Transparent podcast brought to you by Octopost, the only social media management and employee advocacy platform architected for B2B. I'm Jennifer Gutman, your host and director of social strategy here at Octopost. And if you love today's show, we'd love if you subscribe, rate, and give a raving review wherever you get your podcasts. For more discussion on B2B social media marketing, be sure to follow Octopost on LinkedIn. And of course, to gain access to all our free social media marketing and employee advocacy resources, head on over to our website, www.octopost.com. Until next time.